I think what most people think of as a tick is, is the sort of tick that you might pick off a, a dog or a cat, and it's quite a large thing, uh, about the size of, say, like a melon seed. Um, however, the problem is that the ticks that can be infected are sometimes the earlier stage of the tick life cycle. In particular, there's the uh, what we describe as the teenage phase of the of the teen, of the tick life cycle, where it's rampaging around and going to look for food. In other words, the blood meal. And at that stage, it only looks about the size of a peppercorn, really quite small. So that's one of the difficulties because those questing nymph stages of tick um, certainly can. Um, cause Lyme disease, they can carry the bacteria. Um, and that's one of the difficulties. So people might see a little speck on them and not realize that that's a tick. Um, so it's important if you think that is so, then maybe use your camera to get a decent picture and magnify it on your phone and see whether it is or it isn't a tick. Ticks are found all over Scotland. Um, so anywhere where there are um, uh, particularly deer, so roe deer in people's gardens, red deer up in the hill, um, sheep. Um, so any grassy gra grassy land, any woodland in particular, woodland in particular is, is, is one of the main locations for ticks because the ticks can feed off a variety of animals and birds. So grouse, uh, many grouse have ticks um, and many garden birds can have ticks, squirrels can have ticks. Um, so ticks feed off a whole variety of mammals and birds. Well, we used to think that ticks were most common uh, and causing a problem in both the spring and autumn in Scotland, but now we're beginning to see a pattern where the season is extending and there are questions about whether that's due to global warming. What we do know is that any uh, air temperature above 7 degrees centigrade means that ticks are active, so uh, wet weather and increased temperature uh, are likely to make ticks more active for longer in the year. Um, the other problem is when people will present and develop symptoms because what can happen is that you can get bitten by a tick in October um, and then develop a swollen knee, a hot swollen knee, uh, say by the December or the January uh, when nobody is thinking about ticks and Lyme disease and go and see your doctor and maybe, not, maybe you are not even thinking about anything to do with ticks. It's just that the, tick has, the, the germ has gone deeper into your body at that point and it's taken two to three months to come out uh, as an inflammation in your knee joint or the nerves. So uh, therefore it's really, we have to think about it all year round. Well, the first thing is to try and uh, take the tick off as soon as you can. So if you've, if you've been prepared in advance and you've got a tick, you've got a tick removal tool in your first aid kit, um, then use one of the plastic tick removal tools, either a twister sort or a card sort um, to remove the tick. Effectively, what that's doing is getting underneath the, underneath the body of the tick and lifting it and twisting it off uh, without actually squeezing the tick. The problem comes if you use your fingernails or tweezers, then what will happen is you'll end up squeezing the body of the tick and all that's doing is, is squirting the germ, the bacteria, uh, into you that the tick is carrying in its stomach. So we want people to avoid squeezing the tick. So first and best option is to use a proper twister or card type tick remover to get underneath the tick and lift it off. The second option, if you haven't got that, uh, is either a pair of tweezers and the third option is really your fingernails, um, just really to get the tick off as soon as possible. But really we want people to be prepared in advance. So always have a tick remover uh, in your rucksack, always have it in a first aid kit, always have it in the glove box of your car or your van. There's a bit of an old folk tale still around, I think, that suggests that people um, try and put the tick to sleep by covering it up with Vaseline or using alcohol or cigarette burning it or goodness knows what. Uh, these are not a good idea because all you'll end up doing um, is encouraging the tick to stay on your body. It's locked on and that won't get it to, to come off. We want the tick off, off your body uh, because that's how the disease transmission occurs. Well, this is a question we often get asked, um, that somebody's taken the tick off, but then the mouth parts uh, of the tick still remain embedded in the skin. Uh, that's not dangerous, um, and basically it's not worth trying to dig around, uh, trying to get them out. Uh, you're best just leaving that, and then with the body's natural uh, increasing layer for, layering of the skin from the bottom up, uh, eventually that will come out a bit like a splinter. 